WTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer says his big concern during fall camp is making sure his team follows the strict health and safety protocols as students other than his football team return to campus this week. Trailer has threatened several penalties for his players who are caught not wearing masks on campus during COVID-19. That said, do the players feel safe on campus? Well, I feel safe about um, being with the team, the um, trainers and the um, strength and conditioning staff, they have um, been doing a um, good job of us keeping us with masks, keeping us um, six feet apart from um, one another. And, uh, you know, getting tested and all that type of stuff. Uh, they, have really, they have done a really good job at that. And, uh, and making sure we're, um, you know, doing the things we're supposed to do so prevent the, the virus from spreading and everything like that. UTSA hopes to know by this Saturday if they're kicking off their season September 5th or 12th. Right now it's the 12th at Texas State. Dallas Cowboys cut defensive tackle Jared McCoy yesterday, less than 24 hours after he suffered a season ending injury. McCoy an off season pickup went down at camp on the first day of pads on a routine individual drill. He suffered a torn quadricep muscle in his right leg. He can keep his signing bonus of 3 million, but the team will save three and a half million in salary. Very, very unfortunate. Um, I, I tell you, it just, you know, makes you sick on a personal level. Anytime you see a, a player go through this, I can't tell you what he, you know, has meant to our D line just in a short time we've all been together. One of the big changes in the boys' defense is moving Jalen Smith, the weak side linebacker, and Leighton Vander Esch to middle linebacker. The move is expected to allow Smith to be involved in more blitzing plays, increasing his quarterback sack. So, what does Smith think of the move? I'm going to be able to really showcase uh, my versatility, uh, whether it's cover, stop the run, blitz, rush the passer. You know, so for my first four years here in the league, um, you know, been playing the mic position and, you know, w was able to have some success. So now that I'm, I'm back playing my old position, I'm just I'm just looking forward to dialing in and and learning. Houston Texans are looking for what they're calling a lethal threat against opposing teams by using two backs in their offense. David Johnson, who was acquired in the DeAndre Hopkins trade, and Duke Johnson. Both can run with the ball and both can receive out of the backfield dual threat guys to the max. So how will they be able to create those conflicts with the defense as they face this season? So the biggest thing uh, about this league is matchups. Uh, you try to pick a matchup that you think that you will win as an offense or you pick a matchup you think you'll like as a defense. So when it comes to me and David, we try to pick matches to put us on the field at the same time to create conflict with linebackers or safeties or to try to take advantage of our skill set that we both have. So I think it's something that we can, uh, we can push and, and be good at if we work at it, you know, just be consistent. All right, Ursula, David. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, you need a jump start to your school year? I do. There you go. Stick around. They say live, getting ready for tonight's back to school primetime show. It starts at 7 o'clock right here on KZ12. So while they're getting ready for the show, they rounded up the best of back to school tips, gadgets, organizing, food, and a whole lot more. Hey, Mike and Fiona. All right, this show is all about the best of back to school. Yeah, school year is here already, and you know, you always want to be organized. So our good friend Karen Mead is going to give us, she always has great tips on organizing stuff. So she's got some really, really good things you're going to want to watch. And of course, Elder Eats, oh, he's going to the last slice for some great pizza. Because you got to have a full <laughs> tummy when you're doing all that studying. So, all right, chemistry, that can be a tough topic, but we've got one teacher on TikTok, so it's just all about chemistry. And tips for homeschooling, because because parents, we know you need an assist, so we've got you. And you know what's really fun is getting off all the Wi-Fi wi stuff in the wireless devices and doing some just unique little things. And we're going to make an oven and make s'mores outside in a box with foil. And August, well, it is a popular month for birthdays, even this one right here. So we are going to let you know where you can find some great deals and some birthday freebies. Freebies? Freebies. Can I still get one? I'll tell you. I'll send you the list. Pay attention. All right. Hey, <laughs> back to school gas. Gadgets as well. I always love the, the stuff like that. So we got that and a whole bunch more. All right, and SA Live continues in just a few minutes. And one last look at the forecast. Uh, we're expecting uh, temperatures to be Where'd in go? Double digits today. <laughs> we hear him crazy. <laughs> what do you think about the forecast? There you go. Uh, oh, great we're going around the world. Away. There we go. Yeah, there's those hurricane trackers. Uh, there we go. That's what we wanted. 103 
uh, today. 102 tomorrow. Slight chance of some showers Friday and Saturday, and then we'll get another chance for rain hopefully next week if we can get some tropical moisture in here. Uh, we'll be watching what's going on out in the Gulf and the Caribbean as well, guys. Thank you, Justin, and thank you for watching the News at Noon with us. All right, so if you are not ready to get back to school, we're going to get you ready to get back to school. If you are ready to get back to school, then this is just going to add to it, right? SA Live is going to start in just a moment, but say that one more time because I got confused somewhere in there. It's, it's their back to school special. Okay. SA Live starts right now. <laughs> Start your own YouTube channel with this back to school gadget, a roundup of all the gizmos you need to start the school year right from the Gadget Guy. Are you homeschooling your kids this year? We have tips and tricks from the pros. Plus, I'm taking you inside of a pizza joint that's serving up New York style pizza like you've never had before. Celebrate San Antonio. This is SA Live. Happy Back to School Wednesday, everyone, here at Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. So right, we got a full house today, right? I know we did. This is great. I'm David Elder. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. We're gearing up for our Back to School special in prime time tonight, and we wanted to get started a little early. Yep, we have tips for your tech so you can have reliable internet for the kiddos at home. Back to school fashion trends that won't break the bank and will make you look and feel great. Plus local food deals for the whole family. Lunch, dinner, everything's covered. And a game that will test our minds and our muscles. Ooh, that's kind of scary. <laughs> and a <clever laughs> revamp for your curtain space <laughs> for less than 40 bucks. Now that's all tonight at 7 p.m. on the SA Live Back to School Special in prime time, of course, right here on KSAT 12. But you know what we need right now, boys? Hmm. We need to get organized. Oh, yeah. You, you're already organized. We need help. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I just look at my stuff. I'm not worried. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, we have tips and tricks for your sanity and an inexpensive way to store important school projects, personalized organizers. Care Need is helping to ease some of the stress of all that virtual learning. Take a look. Hi, I'm Kara Mead with Kara Mead Organizing. And today I'm really excited to be able to share with you some great organizing tips and strategies and systems that you can implement in your home, whether it's for remote learning or just home workstations. So let's go ahead and get started about transforming a workspace. This space I've got here is really for like third grade and up for a student, a child. Now remember, we've transformed an existing space into your home to something usable and workable for your child. So really as the child gets older, it's good to have a little bit of a desktop surface that they can use with their everyday supplies put away somewhere in an organized fashion so they know where it is, it has a home and they can find it, yet they've got their workspace on top. So today I wanted to share a little bit about an open top file box, so simple, cute hanging file folders. You know, having a visually aesthetic, pleasing and cute space makes it cozy and comfy for your student. Of course, having a to-do list is really important too. So we wanna make sure that every student feels ready in the morning and they kind of know the tasks at hand. So a to-do list is great. Having a mouse pad is nice and easy for them. And of course, keeping their laptop or whatever their electronic device is charged is really important. And of course, having their workbooks and their school books handy with some bookends keeps it nice and easy for them to find what they need. So if we keep it playful and fun and pretty, we've got this here for a younger student, perhaps ages five to eight. So there aren't really as much in the drawer because they like to see their things. So an open letter tray is super handy for just keeping their paper corralled inside and keep it there accessible. Very simple office supplies and a simple to-do list. Maybe even a sibling or a parent might have to help them write out what their to-dos are for the day. Here's a really cute notepad for every day of the week. They can keep track of their assignments and keeping their writing utensils handy in this cute little fun rubber container. And of course, it's really important to have a good accessible charging station to keep their devices charged as well. So for the younger students, something a little more fun, cozy, comfy, and things out and a little more visible and the older student keeping things put away. But here's something really great as well I wanna share. We've got a very simple system for keepsakes. So from pre-K three to senior year, each school year has a hanging file folder in it 
where you store keepsakes for each child in your home. So each child would have their own plastic bin from pre-K three to 12th grade where you store report cards, essays, cute book reports they've done, things that they or you may want to look back on as they age. And then the other super easy component to the two process of keeping keepsakes is just an art box. A very simple box you can pick up at a craft store and this is to store things like large art, finger painting, and such. So hopefully today you got some great tips on getting ready for the school year and keeping keepsakes. The Last Slice is an East Coast style pizza joint on the northeast side of San Antonio. They're serving up cheesesteak sandwiches and cheesesteak fries, chicken wings, fresh Greek salads, and all kinds of pizzas. Like their house special, the white roasted garlic pizza. All of the doughs made fresh every morning and prepared to order. The house special pizza is made with creamy Alfredo sauce instead of red sauce, a heavy layer of baby spinach, handfuls of mozzarella cheese, minced roasted garlic, and bell peppers. It's topped with chunks of grilled all-white chicken breast and pieces of freshly chopped bacon. The pizza gets a thin layer of cornmeal on the bottom and slid into the pizza oven to bake. If you're looking for something a little bit wild, right, something that's gonna have a lot of great flavor, maybe something you never tried before, you gotta try the white roasted garlic pizza. Check this out. It's got an Alfredo sauce for the base as opposed to a traditional red sauce. And then you have all kinds of different fresh toppings on there as well. You have a little bit of spinach on there, some bell peppers, you have a little bit of bacon, and then you have the white chicken on there as well. You can see those tender chunks of chicken on there, cooked to perfection, a little bit of cheese on there, just enough. pizza you need to try when you come out here. The Alfredo sauce sets it over the top. Delicious. It smells like garlic, tastes like garlic, has a really nice texture again on the crust. They know what they're doing out here and there's a reason why this place has been rocking for three years in San Antonio. The Last Slice offers vegetarian options and pizzas for meat lovers. This right here is the screaming vegan pizza, right? It's got all kinds of toppings on it. But get this, no cheese, okay? Because it's vegan, so no cheese goes on. But you're gonna get cherry tomatoes, regular tomatoes, tomatoes, mushrooms, artichoke hearts, red onions, a little bit of arugula, and a balsamic glaze on top. Look at that. That just looks good. That's the first pizza I've ever had with no cheese on it, and it's delicious. This is really good. But when you order, you gotta get the cheesesteak sandwich. Thinly sliced ribeye, onions, bell peppers, and mushrooms get cooked on a flat top with bacon grease. Flake salt seasons the mix and mozzarella and provolone cheese gets added on top. The melty mix gets smashed between a toasted hoagie roll and served with your choice of regular fries or cheesesteak fries. Look at that. <laughs> that looks dangerous. Cereal. This is phenomenal. If you're a sandwich person and you're looking for that next delicious sandwich, this is where you need to come into. It's a pizza joint, but they're making a heck of a sandwich. The shaved ribeye on there and the peppers, when they're like cooked ever so lightly, they still have a nice al dente crunch to them on the pepper. Perfect, and that little bit of bacon grease. But then you put it and mix it up there with the cheese, this is where it's at, y'all. The pizza shop opened three years ago when owner and chef Alejandro Perez graduated culinary school and wanted to start a restaurant that satisfied everyone's taste buds. When I make pizza, I put my heart and soul into it. And I, I want people 
people to enjoy their dinner. Uh, this is more East Coast, uh, New York style. You gotta fold it when you uh, take the first bite. The pizza joint is doing everything to adhere to CDC guidelines and offers customers a clean and safe choice for delicious pizza, salads, and sandwiches to go, curbside and delivery. This is a San Antonio treasure, y'all. This is what's up. To get more pictures, videos, and information on restaurants around Texas, just follow me on Instagram at Elder Eats. Keep eating San Antonio and for SA Live, I'm David Elder. Welcome back to SA Live. Explosions, crazy experiments, and guess what? You just can't look away. <laughs> yes, one chemistry teacher is using the magnetic force of social media to pull in students from everywhere, sparking an interest in science, and you won't believe how fast he's gaining popularity. Science is his wheelhouse. Phil Cook, not your ordinary chemistry teacher, he's experimenting with social media to lure everyone in and make some chemistry connections. I was teaching a chemistry class and I was doing some demonstrations that I normally do. I love to do demonstrations to engage my kids and in my class. And one of the girls in the class said, Mr. Cook, you should make a TikTok. And I said, what is a TikTok? <laughs> and she's like, it's just a short little video like a vine and i said okay how about this i'm going to do the demonstration i'll give you my phone and you make the tiktok and she did she cut it together she made that first video and it was a friday we left for the weekend and then in the morning on monday everyone was like oh my god mr cook have you seen have you seen what happened with that tiktok i'm like no i didn't even think about it uh, but I came back and there was like 10,000 followers already just from the weekend. I made one video. 2.6 million followers on TikTok, 33,000 followers on Instagram. This teacher is reigniting a love for science in many while introducing the world of chemistry to others. To help people better understand the world around them. Or if they're curious, they can ask questions and sometimes I can make videos about that. That's the reward, I think, in, in, in social media for me is, is just doing things that get people curious and help engage them in something they, that they might not otherwise be engaged in. Today, he shares a few fun experiments with us. So we got this beaker right here filled with water. And inside this bottle, I have spores from a club moss plant. And these are called lycopodium spores. Interesting thing about lycopodium spores, they're less dense than water, so they're gonna float on the top. They're also extremely fine. So you notice they're just gonna form a fine layer on top of the water. Now that might not seem like much, but they're almost perfectly spherical and they repel water, almost like a waterproofing agent. So if I take my hand and I place my hand inside the water, you'll notice that they coat my skin and protect it, protect it from getting wet. I take my hand out, my hand is completely dry. Now it's just coated with those lycopodium like, spores, but completely dry, even though it's been completely submerged. Now I can tell you, you can tell that the water is cold. I can tell you the temperature of the water and everything, but my hand is completely dry. Now there's another interesting thing that you can do with lycopodium like, spores that takes advantage of their small size small particle size and resinous particles. These are these are tree spores, club moss spores. So they have a lot of resin in them. They're quite flammable. So if I take a little candle and I ignite the candle and I spray them, they pretty much act like an aerosol as soon as they leave the bottle, the mouth of the bottle. Get it towards the camera this time. Well, what are some of your favorites that have done well too on social media? The most popular TikTok that I've made was one that just arose out of pure curiosity. I had heard online, I don't know exactly where, that aluminum cans had some application of a liner on the inside of them, like a plastic liner. Well, I know that aluminum can be kind of etched and corroded away by reacting it with sodium hydroxide. So I took a full can of Curie Coke, vented it a little bit, and just kind of popped the tab just a little bit, and then I submerged it in some sodium hydroxide, which is just lye, it's like drain cleaner. And your kiddos can take advantage of a free virtual summer camp what? this week. Forget the saying, don't play with your food. This is going to be a food-based polymerization reaction. We take some of it, 
I'm just using a plastic syringe for this. We put it in this beaker that has some calcium added to it. I'm just gonna start by adding some drops. That the calcium ions, it stitches all of those little links together. And actually you can take them out. Oh my goodness. I can hear too much, but you can see them. They're like little caviar. Okay. So that what you have there, and, and he was telling me, you can put flavor in those, and that's where you get that boba tea, the jellies, and the little squishy ball. <laughs> I don't know what's on there. I'm kind of glad it's not caviar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, somewhere Mike Osterhage's head is exploding with glee uh, exactly. and wonder. Exactly. That guy's his spirit animal. Yes. I'll have to connect them at some point. Right? But yes, really cool, the whole culinary chemistry thing, and he has so much more to show off. Spray it in. And it doesn't look like I did much until you reach in and you grab it. You have a really long kind of spaghetti string. There might be some restaurants in the San Antonio area, area where the chefs use this as a molecular gastronomic technique where they'll put certain flavors in the liquid. You can imagine you could do like fruit flavors or savory flavors, whatever you wanted. And then you could create these little caviar and when you eat them, they kind of pop. Say live, we're helping you get the school year started off, right? And one thing that gets most students excited is some really cool gadgets. Yes, they can help take the edge off waking up early or study time. So whether you're headed to the classroom or learning at home, our gadget guy, Steve Greenberg, has the best gadgets for back to school. Hey! hey. Now there's no question this is gonna be a strange back to school year, and whether you're going to a classroom or learning from home, I've got some great back to school gadgets that'll hopefully make your life a little bit easier. First up is this alarm clock right over here. It's from the folks at Lacrosse Technologies, the So Luna Light Alarm Clock. It's got this band of colored lights right here that actually keep changing, so it's kind of like a rainbow effect. And what's cool about it is that you can have it create a wake up effect, you can have it do a sunset effect, you can even do uh, guided breathing exercises with it. Very cool. It's of course got the day and date. It's got the time. It's got the temperature and it even has a USB port over here so that you can charge up your smartphone while you're sleeping. Very neat from the folks at Lacrosse Technologies. It's about $32.99 from Costco. Next, this over here is a portable lap stand and lap desk from the folks at the Gromit. What's great about this, it's totally adjustable. So you can adjust it moving these little legs around so it's great for studying on the couch or in bed. If you want to have stand-up desk you can set up for that as well very neat moving on over here since we're all using tablets and whatnot to study these days you gotta have really good earbuds and that's what this is all about this is ear fun air uh, i'm actually using one right now to do this recording and ear fun air is terrific because it has all the same features of the leading brands out there but what's most amazing about it it's one third the cost and the battery life on this thing seven hours it's got noise canceling you name it it's really great, about $50 uh, if you go to Amazon.com. Next, moving on to younger kids, right over here. This is the Insta Studio from the folks at We Cool Toys. Now this is great for learning at home too because you can set it up like this so you can see the teacher and learn your lesson. But this is also terrific for creating viral videos. So this thing is very adjustable. This goes up and down and you can create crafting videos or cooking videos or slime videos. I know two kids in Dallas who have created slime videos. They have 50,000 followers. I wish I had 50,000 followers. Next, moving on over here. This is from the folks at Learning Resources, and these are all STEM toys. Science, technology, engineering, math. This one teaches coding. This is a puzzle globe, great for learning all about geography. These avocados teach emotions. And this is called Spike the Fine Motor Hedgehog. And these quills, you can learn all about colors and numbers and whatnot. And also just grasping them is all about that fine motor skill. And when you're not using the quills, they can all be stored inside Spike's back. Really a great idea. Last but not least, come on over here. This is Silly Poopies Hide and Seek. And as the name suggests, you have a poopy here that one child can hide, the other child, the children try to find it. And when you push this button, he gives out clues and also... Ew. Ew. And 
tells you where he is. And then when you find him, you get a song and you get to dance to it. So this is great because it's non-screen fun. It teaches cause and effect. It also teaches about learning to follow rules in the game, which is so important for preschoolers and kindergarten. And it's available at Walmart for about 13 bucks. And also, besides being a learning thing, it's also a lot of fun, which is kind of true of everything here. So if you want more information on anything I talked about here, go to my blog, go to stevegreenberg.tv, click on Steve's blog, and you'll find all the information there. Please stay safe, stay home, and try to get through all this. Take care. Bye-bye. I, I want to check out that puzzle globe thing. You know, I thought you were going to check out the Silly Poopies hide and seek or whatever it is. So. Ah! Okay, does anyone else agree that if your dog accidentally ate the Play-Doh, that's what would happen? Yes, <laughs> or, or when the cat gets into the little uh, tie-tie ribbons on the Christmas gifts, and yeah, so. That too. Yeah, so. <laughs> hey, Enjoy uh, those visuals. <laughs> Next on SA Live, bring the zoo to you. How this educational nonprofit is going virtual, just in time for back to school. Hi everybody, this is uh, Robert Trejo from Zoo Imagination. Um, we have Zoo Imagination as a wildlife outreach uh, here in San Antonio. We are a nonprofit organization uh, that is dedicated to teaching people and of all ages about wildlife, about all kinds of different cool things about wildlife and animals. A lot of people don't know this, but this is a living dinosaur. People might ask, well, how is that a living dinosaur? Well, the thing about alligators and crocodiles is that they have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. And when the dinosaurs went extinct, dinosaurs and crocodiles did not go extinct. In fact, they look the same now as they did millions of years ago. This little alligator is 10 months old. His name is Voodoo. And Voodoo is an American alligator. American alligators are found uh, in the southeastern part of the United States and that is the only place in the world you can find these animals. Uh, Voodoo came to us from the Abilene Zoo. Uh, it was a rescue because it was uh, in somebody's backyard with four other little baby alligators. And alligators are not small, tiny little lizards. They can grow to be big. This one's going to grow to be about 8 feet long and weigh 300 pounds. The alligators are big reptiles and so at our facility at Zoo Imagination we are going to be able to provide him and his brother with a very large area and a pond so they can grow and live there for the rest of their lives. The alligators are, uh, they live about 50 years, uh, right now he's 10 months old, so they live about 50 years, they have 74 to 80 teeth. Uh, and alligators are interesting animals because they do look a lot like uh, you would think of a, a dinosaur. Look at the tail, look at the scoots on there. On the top of his body he's got bony plates. And on those bony plates are what provide him with a armor plating to, to from predators. So that way if they go attack him, he's got that armor plating. Now what's interesting about alligators is that they are uh, they can be out of the water, but they spend most of the life underwater because they are built for that. They have webbed feet uh, and they are also very camouflaged when they're in the water. It almost looks like a floating log. Well, these are amazing animals. Again, these are some of the animals that we have at Zoo Imagination. Uh, these are rescue animals. Uh, so our organization is dedicated to teaching people about wildlife, also uh, about responsible pet ownership because we do occasionally get pets uh, that are unwanted, abandoned, that are exotic. It can be challenging keeping children entertained after spending more time than ever before at home. Kristen Denzer, CEO and founder of Tierra Encantada, is going to show us some activities to keep kids busy, engaged, inspired, and unplugged. Hi there, Kristen. Hi. All right, tell us a little bit about Tierra Encantada. Sure. We are a Spanish immersion early education program, so a daycare and preschool that is franchising across the country. All right, you've got some really, really fun ways for the family to kind of work together and explore the wonders of STEM with some DIY activities, and it's all stuff you've got laying around the house, right? Exactly, yes. So we have two fun things today. So the first is how to create a solar oven at home. And of course, with a solar oven, you can make s'mores. Everybody likes s'mores in the summer. So the first step is you need a box and tin foil. You'll cover the bottom sides and interior lid with the tin foil. You're going to add a piece of black paper to the bottom of the box. You will add in your s'mores. Now, depending on the temperature, 
temperature outside, that will impact how long it takes for them to cook. If it's 90 degrees, it could be just five minutes. If it's 70, it could be more like 20 minutes. So all you do with your child is bring it outside. You're gonna prop it open with a little stick and let it sit exactly like that. And then they can enjoy. And you can talk about how the sun works with solar heating and heating your food. As simple as that. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Okay, uh, bird feeders. I mean, it's always great to have birds in the backyard. And again, you can make it with some simple things later on the house. Exactly. So the first thing you'll find is some sort of container. So empty water bottle, empty soda bottle, milk jug, anything like that. Your child can decorate it. So we have some little circles painted on here. You're gonna take a string or piece of yarn or twine to have to hang it. You're gonna cut two openings in it where the birds will access the food. And then you just take a wood dowel. So super simple. You're gonna just string it through your little holes. Pour the bird food right in there. And then that's it. Hang it outside your window and then you can observe the different birds that come and eat. Okay, those are two of the simplest, most creative ideas I, I think I've ever seen. What are some of the other things? I know you're not demonstrating them, but some of the other things that you uh, that people can make. Absolutely. So you have all those marshmallows around from the s'mores. So one thing that's really fun, and you can do this either with the baby marshmallows or with big ones and dowels, is you can create structures with STEM. So if you have younger kids, you know, more like toddler or preschool, they might not be able to think quite as creatively as older kids, but you can create, say, a triangle or a cube and have them replicate it. But if they're an older child, they can create pretty elaborate tall structures using toothpicks, marshmallows, or wood dowels and marshmallows. And so that's a really fun one. All right, where can folks go for more information? Uh, TierraIncantata.com on our blog. We have tons of different activities, recipes, craft ideas, and videos. I love those. Kristen, thank you very much. Kristen Denzer, the CEO and founder of Tierra Encantada. Good chatting with you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, right. we decided we'd try this. Mm -hmm. We sure did. Yep. And the first thing we did earlier was line this box with foil. Please note that if you are doing this in bright sunlight, do not <laughs> stare directly at the foil at certain <laughs> angles. It may blind you. <laughs> Mike found that out the hard way. Okay, it's so bright. we've got the foil. We put some black uh, construction, construction paper, paper down. down. Right. Okay, we put the graham cracker squares there and we put the chocolate. Okay, and this one is already melting. Okay, now, so I'm gonna put that right there. And it's funny because as soon as we put this thing out here, there hasn't been a cloud in the sky all day. Now the sun is right behind a cloud right now. But as you can see, it did melt fairly well. And I then- I requested that cloud because we were gonna be out here for this <laughs> next kind of two minutes. And what you can do is you, you partially close this and you want the sun to kind of reflect off of here. And maybe, you know, if it's a little bit lower in the sky and you can use the uh, marshmallow to, to sort of stick it together and let that kind of cook there. And like she said, depends on the, the temperature outside as well. So Brown also, <laughs> now you can save some of your juice bottles, anything like that, and just cut out a hole. And you want to be very careful doing this because this can be kind of tough. You might want to have mom and dad do this, but just cut out a little flap. And I'm glad we sort of pre-cut yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. And you can poke a hole in there and buy dowel rods. We, you know, if you have uh, those long skewers that you can grocery store as well, and then just fill it up with, with bird seed, with some bird seed or some uh, some sunflower seeds like that. It's coming out the other Sorry. side. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> Forgot about that other hole. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. How many? Hey, look. I work for bird seed. <laughs> I work, yes. Anyway, yeah. So fun little fun little crafts. Are you gonna go hang it? Yeah, let me take okay. this one. I'm gonna okay. try and hang it over here. So if you can read the whoops, oh. read the teases. This is gonna be the most entertaining part here. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how many tries it takes. I got <laughs> all it. Right, Look. For more information, of course, on all these fun STEM activities and Tierra Encantada, just head to our website, essaylive.com and click on the as seen on I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna Look at that. He's more interesting here for the last, you know, half hour or so while you do that. Any, any luck? Yeah. There's uh, my, ah, there's ah. my bird feeder hanging up there. Aren't you resourceful? Uh.
And joining me now is Brian Galvin, the Chief Academic Officer for Varsity Tutors. And we've been doing a lot of fun things with you guys lately. We talked to Coyote Peterson, we talked to Nicole Ellis, because you've been doing these amazing free virtual summer camps. But now we're talking back to school because parents, myself included, we are all wondering what are we going to do? So you guys have some very good resources available to parents, right? So we're our parents in this journey. We're students in this journey. Um, and a couple things we're really excited about. One is uh, we've got adaptive assessments in our, our learning lab program, which question on a lot of people's minds is with COVID slide, is my student ready for the next grade? Um, and if so, if, if not, um, what do they need to do to get there? And so we have assessments that will kind of help you take a look at, you know, the fundamental skills that would go into say fourth grade math that they should have from third grade and pinpoint the ones that uh, they need to work on to be ready and build a, a custom learning plan for your students. So we also know a big question on parents' minds, really a three-part question the way we've been looking at it is whatever my school district is doing heading into the back to, to the school year, whether it's all virtual, whether it's all in-person or sort of the dreaded hybrid is, will it be safe? Will it be effective? And will it be enough? And so another thing that, uh, that we've got together is a school at home program where if you don't want to go back to the traditional school system, you don't know if it's safe, you don't, you don't love the idea of whatever your district put together, um, we can be a full school replacement for you. We'll walk you through the accreditation process to make sure that, um, you know, in Texas or wherever you may live, you know, you get credit for it. Or there's a supplementary program where you, know, you can have enrichment classes or, you know, weekly math review classes. Um, if you're just not sure that school will be a enough, we have that for you. So our school at home program is designed to be a, a one-stop uh, shop for all things homeschool. If you want to have your, your student learn at home, but you don't want to be the one to teach it, we're here to help. Is this something you're starting just because of what's going on in the times right now? Because um, that's that's amazing that you're able to do that for parents, because I think a lot of them are considering to go ahead and just homeschool. It's, it's kind of amazing. In a typical year, 3%, 3.3% of families homeschool in a typical school year. Um, right now, 47% of families are considering it. And so based on that data and, and just sort of a natural evolution, you know, you mentioned um, having had some of our celebrity instructors, Coyote Peterson, Nicole Ellis, and others um, on your show. When COVID started, we realized parents have a lot of hours to fill. Um, kids need, you know, need to learn and need to enjoy learning. And so we built out um, our whole virtual school day and virtual summer camp program. You know, now we're far along with that evolution to be able to say, hey, what's the next need that people have? So what are some of the statistics that surprised you? Because I know there's so many parents, like you said, more are considering homeschooling. Uh, and I am one of those parents too that's worried about, you know, is she ready to go into third grade? Or my son who's about to, he's supposed to start kindergarten. And it's like, oh, look, he's gonna miss all of that. I think probably the most surprising statistics to us are, are just, you know, shocking, but not surprising, I guess, was that 47% of families are thinking about homeschooling. Um, and that matches another stat that 48% of parents don't think their child will go back full time to an in-person school in uh, at least the first semester. Um, so those kind of, uh, you know, really hit us at like, you know, wow, people are, are not ready to go back to school. don't think their schools will be. Um, and then another one that, that's pretty staggering is over two thirds of parents um, really worry about their students falling behind of just school won't be enough um, and that was sort of our impetus for even if you don't want to fully replace school um, you may just want some supplementary programs because you know so much gets lost in that uh, that's you know the hybrid programs of kids wondering what is today is it a home day is it a school day how many hours you know dealing with new rules and regulations I love that we're all learning as we go to through this uh, COVID <laughs> Pandemic. We're practicing what we preach right now, but uh, exactly. you know, listen to experts and uh, have an open mind and you know, constantly be learning and evolving. So it's been a good lesson for us too. VarsityTutors.com, um, it's, uh, it's all there. August and September are the busiest months for birthdays and having to spend money on gifts for your oh, yeah. family, friends and kids and all that, you know, it can get really pricey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know that for a fact. So <laughs> Rosalinda from Alamo City Moms Blog put together a list of birthday freebies from around town that are fun and will save you money. First up, back
Baskin Robbins has a reward program that offers kids a free scoop of ice cream on their birthday. Ooh, if your child is under 10 years old, then have them join Zaxby's, Zach's Kids Clubs. They will receive a free cookie card when they sign up and a free kids meal card on their birthday. Chuck E. Cheese lets you sign up to be a rewards member, and when you have a child under 13 years of age, they'll receive a, ha a half birthday and an actual birthday oh. reward, okay, in the form of tokens, games, personal pizzas. Mm. I love all this free stuff. And if your kid needs new shoes or accessories, then the Journeys and Journeys Kids birthday clubs are for you. The club often offers coupons and discounts. Love those discounts. How about this healthier freebie? If you have a teenager, they can receive a small smoothie or juice for their birthday at Jamba Juice. Mm, I love Jamba Juice. Sephora, ooh, another favorite, offers beauty insider rewards that are perfect for your kids and for you. If you are 13 years old or older, you can get a free cosmetic gift on your birthday. I get those every year. <laughs> if you sign up for for the Nothing Bunt Cake Email Club, you'll receive a birthday coupon for a free buntlet cake. This is a perfect way to start off the birthday celebrations. Wow, what is a buntlet cake? Okay, I gotta look that up. For more information on Alamo City Mom's Block, just head over to salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab where we have provided all of this information. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? You were a cheerleader, weren't you? Maybe. <laughs> you got great spirit. I almost started bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> Do the ready, okay thing. So make sure hey, your school okay. spirit right now on the SA Live, KSAT, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And look for your photos tonight on our Back to School special in prime time. That's right. It all starts at 7 o'clock tonight right here on KSAT 12. So get ready to join us. We have a lot of fun things, heartwarming stories, everything all combined. We've got back to school trivia and learning tips, what you need to make sure your tech works right for the school year, and much, much more. It's all at 7 o'clock tonight on KSAT 12, brought to you by Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. It is at 7 o'clock, yep. so we've got a lot to do between now and then to get ready for it. Yeah. And, yeah, we're doing a lot tonight, aren't we? Yes, yes. David ready. needs to start, you know, working with the appetizers, okay? And I need to stretch. Stretching out that stuff.